even though he has not always been protected, he's always been a protector. Broken people saw that signal and done what they thought they needed to do to the request that I was making, and they just chose improperly. He never told me nothing. I knew nothing about it. I feel like everyone in my family, in some form or way, has been fondled or molested or raped in some form or fashion. I couldn't understand how God was in me because I was that. There was tolerated versus celebrated. It's a wrong way and right way to do everything, and Larry always seemed to choose the wrong way. <laughs> yes, I was drugged and raped, and that happened when I was 17 years old. Misfits have an ability to stick out. But if the misfit accept that they absolutely cannot fit in, then they become someone with, a, with an X factor. Multimedia personality, comedic commentator, songwriter, recording artist, spiritual leader, and actor. Catch Larry Reed on the BET Plus original series, Kingdom Business, and on American Gangsta Trap Queens, streaming online at BET.plus. Church folk, they having sex, but they don't have nobody to talk to them about it. I have special guests and sex experts. The live feature is now working on my OnlyFans account. You need to sign up. Go to OnlyFans.com slash Larry Reed Live. Now, I'm not responsible for the other stuff. Y'all gonna go out there and try to start doing that. It's not my business. But my job is to keep the conversation going with you on OnlyFans exclusively. It's gonna be good. Larry Reed Live! Coming to OnlyFans. Sign up tonight. Stay connected to Larry Reed Live. Take a moment and like the Facebook page. Subscribe to the YouTube page and hit the bell. Text Larry Reed Live to 33222. That's the words Larry Reed Live. No spaces to 33222. And get notified when we go live. Become a member of Patreon. Log on to patreon.com forward slash Larry Reed Live. Sign up, then download the Patreon app and turn on your notifications. Get connected today. We're about to have a conversation. All right, welcome to Larry Reed Live, where we have the Commodore Station. Ah! So then, <laughs> take a moment right now, let everybody know your mama, your, your sister, your brother, not a dot and every darn body, that Larry Reed Live is on. And how can you do that? Hit like, hit share right now. I need 1,000 of you to hit like on tonight. And this is how you can do it. If you're watching me on YouTube on your phone, you have to pull out and then hit the like. If you're watching me on Facebook, pull out of the live, go to facebook.com slash Larry Live, scroll till you see the live show, hit like, and then come on back in so that everybody can know what is about to happen. It's a conversation that we have been wanting to have with one of our most favorite hot topic people that we have been, you know, it's been a while since 2016 since we've been discussing anything that goes viral and is talked about online. And there was a story that came up concerning Pastor John Gray a few times. And every time I was terribly intrigued with his wife and she is here today. I think this is probably the first sit down that she's had a conversation just herself you know, to just discuss, to find out about who she is. 
where she come from. Now, I've learned quite a bit about her over the last year. So I'm going to ask the questions so that you can know her the way that I've learned her. And there are some things I just do not know. I've never asked in our time of conversating, you know, so mm, conversing. They conversing, say conver conversing, conversing, right? You yes, supposed to say that word, excuse me, I'm so sorry. You say what you want. Yeah, I say what the hell I want. It is, let me lie. <laughs> anyway, so, <laughs> so we're going to be having that kind of conversation here tonight. But you need to tell everybody that we are on. And this is how you do it. You have to hit like, let me tell y'all. These white folk at Facebook and at Google, Mesa, Mega, Meta, whatever them changed the name to, you still the same white man is over everything. They like to hide the live stream of the black content creators. So I need all of you guys to hit like and to share. And if you got an IG, you need to screenshot that you're watching me on Facebook and YouTube and then tag me and do a share, a, a share on your story, tag my platform, and I'm going to retweet it so that people can know, not retweet it, you restore it. I don't know what you call it. You restore it on the IG. Repost. I'm going to restore it. Yeah. I'm going to repost, restore it, such and whatever. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it so that everybody can know that you the one that let folks know that you watching on Larry Live on YouTube and on Facebook. So do that right now. And if you are watching me and you want to find out what has happened before she got here, after she get, got leave, that's why I need to be in Patreon because I go over there and I just damp. And I said, Lord, this was so hard to pull off. And I just share everything. Patreon, P A T R E O N dot com slash Larry Reed Live. And it's also a great community to be in for those of you that are trying to become your best self going into 2023 financially, mentally, emotionally, and physically. We have experts and coaches over there and we meet together several times a week. So it's going to be a great source of empowerment as well. Now, I hope you have hit like and shared versus you sit here watching just eating up, gobbling up everything that we're going to talk about. I need for you to put this in pate. And the way that you do that is hitting like and hitting share. And we are about to have the conversation. Now, I nicknamed her the Avenger. And I don't know if we ever discussed why, but I know you understand why and know that it was endearing. And maybe she didn't know it at first. We just gonna talk. Y'all get to eavesdrop on us having a conversation. And patrons, I got all your questions. Some of this, some of this ain't none of your darn business. So I didn't even write it on my cue card. I'm just going to ask the questions that I think that we want to know since we are as nosy as we are. <laughs> it's the truth. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to present to you Aventur, the Avenger. Gray, yeah. the wife of John Gray. Here she is. And she's looking really, really, really hey, pretty. <laughs> it's the Avenger. <laughs> yeah. The one and only. Yeah, but you, you do understand why I called you that. Well, let me explain. You tell me. So you everybody. tell me. And then okay. I'll share with you okay, how so, I feel about it. Okay, so this is the reason why I called you that. Because whenever stuff would hit the internet, the, the where it started was the meeting that your husband had with Donald Trump. Oh, gosh. <laughs> Ooh. That's where it started because, see, we share a lot of the same friends. We're in the same industry. And you know, as far as the church is concerned, as pastors and spiritual leaders, but also in entertainment and reality shows. And, you know, so we know a lot of the same people. Mm -hmm. So I had known that you had told him, don't go. That that was my advice. He yeah. did not take it, yeah. as we can see. Yeah, but there, but there was a, some other situations I knew your advice on it, and he didn't take it. And so I said, okay, she, she got a superpower, and she really fights for her husband and her family and relentless, the church, mm -hmm. you know? So I said, she, and I love Marvel. I said, she a whole Avenger. Whole Avenger. And I, I, I was having trouble saying your name anyway at the time. So I, I just started calling the the Avenger. Baby Jakes and the Avenger. <laughs> so when you heard that initially, how did you feel about it? So initially I was like, you know, this is this is poking mm -hmm. fun at me. Mm -hmm. um, but to be honest, and what you don't know and maybe your listeners don't know, is that I've always, you know, felt like 
I was an Avenger. Wow. I literally felt that way. I was like, give me the bodysuit, wow. watch my hair turn into whatever it needs to be, yeah. move over Scarlet. I'm here. Oh. I'm an Avenger. And it's it's not about, you know, poking fun or anything. Mm-hmm. I've embraced it yeah. and I love it actually yeah. because it's the truth of who I am. It is the absolute. And yeah. the more I get to know you, I visited the new church mm-hmm. in Atlanta. Um, I hadn't planned to, to visit. Well, I did want to visit, but it was just not the right time to visit. Mm-hmm. But your husband ca- called me that He said, I want you to be there. No, I think he had you to call me. And But I heard him say, I want you to be there. I want you to come. I said, okay, I'm going to come. And I absolutely enjoyed myself. I enjoyed the message mm-hmm. that John preached. I like the approach. He's talking about re- representing Jesus yeah. in a way where people can understand and relate. I thought it was a brilliant approach to the text and it was in keeping with the text. Yeah. And then the overall energy that was in the church, the excitement. And so when we got in the back and I was sitting there waiting, you came in because of, what's the guy named? Not is it Tyrese? Mm-hmm. That's the name. Yeah. He was in there getting prayer and stuff from John. So we were sitting and you were sitting right across and your kids started coming. And I started watching you, how you move. Yeah. I said, this is a whole avenger. <laughs> I mean, in every way you are like the the superpower of your family with without you i don't know if john would be able to stand and do what he do every sunday you know what um i think i'm very sure of who god has made me even though we're continuously evolving we're continuously learning ourselves I think I know my position and it's not one of weakness it's one of strength to know who you actually are um And when things are easy, it's easy to function, right? You're not special because you can function in ease. You're not special because all the bills are paid and you can you can cite all the resources and you can see it everything through. You are special when you don't see a way around it. You're special when you don't understand what's happening. You're special when you um, get the opportunity to see who you actually are in the trenches Mm -hmm. because everybody can fly high in the mountains, but it's when you're in the valley that you get to actually know who you are. Mm-hmm. And uh, I've been through some things through childhood up into this moment, up into, you know, adulthood. Mm-hmm. I didn't know who I would be joined to. I didn't know if I would be married or had kid, have kids. I did, you know, I aspired to do that. I didn't know who John isn't like anybody. I thought I would marry. Mm-hmm. Um, so when God, um, I feel like joined us together. I was like, what's happening? Cause I didn't understand it. And I have to be honest because I'm the most non first lady you will meet. <laughs> you know, I mean, we've got right. a new one in Shawnee, right. but right, exactly. it, with, with me and that's not a knock. It's, yeah, it's just, I, it's the truth. you know, who she is. Yeah. It's, it doesn't seem like yeah. that, but I think this what God, what God is doing in this moment um, is showing you the truth of people because pastors have you know elevated themselves above the people mm-hmm. we're just people and the people have elevated the pastors ab- above them i think sometimes we want to we want a master and we also want the illusion of perfection mm-hmm. you know you said that you've been through some things mm-hmm. and see there has to be a space that your strength comes from prior to us getting to know we really came to know you in the last five six years mm-hmm. when you I mean, you guys became a, you are a social media sensation. <laughs> I mean, if you mention your, you guys' name, if you are in the work that I do, people come to see what we think <laughs> about these people yeah. that are totally different yeah. than anything we've seen in pastors and first lady. So what is it that prepared you? What is it you went through that made you be strong as you are? Let me tell you, um, there, there, are, there are a few things, but if I can go back to one in particular, um, I was in school at FAMU. Um, I was a freshman and my mother um, had a fall at church. Mm-hmm. She had three aneurysms, two in her head, two ruptured, one bubbling, three in her head. Uh, she was supposed to die. I was 18 years old and... Um, I woke up one morning to my aunt on the phone saying, hey, I need you to get everything you can. I'm about to pick you up. You got to go home. 
I didn't understand what was happening. So I told her, um, you know, what's happening. She said, your mom is sick. She's really sick, but I'll talk to you in the car. I didn't know at that point what an aneurysm was, but she shared with me, my mom had three, two rupture, one bubbling, and that people don't make it with one. So in mm -hmm. so many words, your mother's dying. Mm -hmm. So we're going home because this is what's about to happen. Um, the truth is, is that she didn't die. She made it. Um, but I didn't know that was going to happen. So everything that I had known about church, I could sing all of the songs. I could recite the scriptures. But that was my deeper level in God moment where I was like, OK, my mother's a great person. What did she do to deserve this? Mm -hmm. And I don't know what I'm going to do without her. So, God, if you don't show up me and you, we're going to have a problem. And that's how I was talking to him. And God was like, I like that because everything isn't always, oh, thou art. And no, God wants a real conversation. Right. He wants, because he already knows you anyway. Mm -hmm. So pretending for him and your prayers and how you interact with people, it doesn't move the needle with him because he knows the truth about you. Mm -hmm. So I feel like um, in that moment, I learned exactly who I was exactly who I was not. I was going to pray. I was going to stay on my knees until he answered me. And even if the answer wasn't the one I wanted, I was going to get attention, the attention of heaven. Mm -hmm. So in that moment when she was, you know, passing and they said, well, if she does make it, she'll be a vegetable. She won't talk. She won't walk. She won't speak again. She won't even know you. Mm -hmm. um, it'll, it's going to be hard. So I need you to make peace with either a dead mother or a mother who won't recognize you mm -hmm. again. And so my heart dropped. I'm like, what is happening? Why me? Why this? And why now? And so all of those questions got answered in, in a moment. My mom, um, her surgeon was an atheist. Isn't that great? Um, <laughs> he was like, whatever it is that you all do. Wow. In his words, he was trying to say, if you're going to pray, yeah. if you're going to pray for her or whatever you do, do that because I cannot start the surgery tonight. I need fresh hands, fresh eyes, and I'm exhausted after multiple surgeries. I need, you know, God, you believe in God. Okay. Mm -hmm. Keep her through the night. And in the morning at five, I'll get started. It'll be eight or so hours. I'll do what I can. He said, and I'm going to be honest. I've only dealt with one. I've never dealt with three. So everything was just oh like, God, you were 18. Yes. Everything was leaning towards doom. I'm not going to have her. She's dying. This is it for me. I don't know what's next. And the relationship with my father, I love my dad, but I don't I didn't know him well because all throughout my life, here's where the abandonment issues come in. He was away. Mm -hmm. He would work in, in Jersey, you know, on the Lincoln and Harlem tunnels. And he was um, a foreman. And then after that, he drove long distance. So I didn't have the everyday dad relationship, wow. even though they've been married for 53 years. Probably my mom says the reason why they are still married is because he wasn't there all the time. Yeah. Sometimes distance makes the heart grow fine. Though. It does. Mm -hmm. It does. And in and, and all that, if I can, because I can be long winded. Um, I watched I watched all of the elements line up and I mm -hmm. said, OK, God, you're you're drawing a distinction between the little girl Aventer, Monique and the woman I'm becoming. So he was like, you're a warrior. And I and I and this is what I'm showing you that you are. So I started encouraging my family yeah. about what we were about to experience. And the truth is, is that mommy went through that for other people. Like, yeah. I feel like my pain, I, I'm, it's for other people. What mm -hmm. I've seen, what I've lived is for other people. It's never for you. It's mm -hmm. Your success isn't about you. Mm -hmm. Your the way you uh, see things isn't mm -hmm. about you. It's about the God in you or the light that's connected to you. And the you contribution you're supposed to make to, to the people. community. Yeah. That a lot of times comes out of your, your, your pain. Yeah. But when people hear and see and experience yeah. your pain, they see strength. So that's yeah. the reason why when I look at you, I see the Avenger. And it sounds like that your mom was your example of oh, like great strength. The best strength I've ever seen. If, if people ask about heroes and people that you you know, you honor and that you look up to, I, I, I only see her. Like I see her. I love, you know, the Oprah's of the world. I love all of these different people, but it's my mother because I've seen her live it in the house that I, you go, you know, I grew up in. You know, that's interesting to me. Very intimate. I'll tell you why I have a very, very, very strong mom. 
my grandma, her mom is even sh- more strong, stronger. It's, it's phenomenal. Yeah. And then her mom, I had the privilege of knowing her as well. And all of the women I know that have looked to their mom for their strength are like super master moms like yourself. Yeah. And that was the thing that was more impactful when I came to Relentless and I watched how your children responded to you. And that's one thing for you to be, yeah, 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 yeah. But it's another thing for your, your child to read your energy and, and follow your energy. Yeah. The response of your children was, yes, ma'am, no, ma'am, what, mom? I can tell that they were parented and mothered. We're in sync. Yes. Yeah, because they're not a burden. They didn't ask to be here. So I don't know why parents like, of course, you get anxious and you get tired and all of that. But these little humans you're in charge of, like they're looking to you for answers. They're looking to you for everything. That's what we should be doing to the God we serve. Like we're his kids and we're out here running, you know, rampant and doing the most and everything. And he's just like, I'm here. I got you. And if we would just embrace that, that when I look at for in in theory, um, I realize and I recognize that that my platform is with them. If I lose with them, I don't care about everybody else. Wait a minute now. Like, wait a minute. I happen to let me sit with that. I'm telling you, it's for them. Oh my God! If if I if I lose the platform in, the, mom. in the heart and in the mind of my children, mm-hmm. it does not matter about this platform with thousands. Mm-hmm. Of I don't care about everybody else. If I lose with them, I lose. God is expecting me to be mom to them. I'm not Pastor Av, not, you know, Aventure, Av Unfiltered, not Aventure on Book of John Gray, not the Aventure that people think they know. I need for my children to be proud of me. And I also want God to be proud of me because he entrusted me with them. Okay, so ladies and gentlemen, we're seeing the, the the source of this strength. This is not fake. Oh no, and it's it's very real. Yeah, and it's real to me. It's, it's very it's it's amazing to me that that hits me as a parent. You know, because we we in our work we talk to thousands, there are thousands looking at us, mm-hmm. but we have children and how they view us and experience us mm-hmm. and what they say about us. Mm-hmm. That's what matters more. Yeah. than anything. It's a stranger commenting versus the child you birthed. Yeah. You know, and how they see you. Yeah. And I had to grow to that. I'm not saying I was always there because I wasn't. Now, right, when right. we first started, I was popping off at every comment because I need you to understand. I love that. You though. don't know me. You think you do. You don't know yeah. me. Okay. All of this and all of that. But listen, I love that. Though. I'm going to tell you. I covered that because you don't mind going in the comments section. And when I have time, I still will. <laughs> it's just that my energy is not as much for that as it was right, yeah. because it's a waste of time. Yeah, yeah. There, You could tell everybody from top to bottom your everyday life and they will still create an alternate reality Absolutely. of you. And, the of more, and a lot of times, the more truth you tell, the more... Um, strange and crazy lies they reach for. Oh yeah, to sensationalize. There's nothing else to, yeah. to pull from. Yeah, to, and yeah. I and I have to say, Larry, this is an appreciation because at first I was like, "Gosh, like, what is it? Why? Why is he riding the family or what? That kind of right, thing." Right. And then I also saw God doing something in you. Mm-hmm. I saw a shift and it was informative and it's becoming very positive. Mm -hmm. And you talk about what's already being talked about versus like, you know, (laughs) the the digging aspect. And and if if I can be completely honest, it was just kind of like whatever the first thing was. I'm like, why do people get to be anonymous? Mm -hmm. If you bold and you standing on what you say, baby, just put your name on it. Because I'm going to put mine on mine. (laughs) Yeah, but I want to I want to get I want to get. To that, I want to no be anonymous, boo. Tell it yeah. if you if you about it, say your name. Yeah, I'm gonna get to that, <laughs> but I want to start with the book of John Gray okay. because this you guys, I, I haven't I, unless I'm forgetting someone. I don't rem- I don't remember any because you guys done it for like three three seasons. Yeah, it was three, and it was on the own network. Mm-hmm. 
And the book of John Gray did very well. It did. It did very well. And it was interesting. Yeah. So how was that? Because I know you have been in a high profile prior to that, but that took it to a whole nother level. How was that experience of camera in your face all during time? I was sick of it. Mm. Um, I enjoyed the name book of John Gray because I wanted it to be about him. Um, And basically the opportunity for the docuseries came from a couple of our friends who were already doing a show. Um, You probably know Pastor Rich Wilkerson Jr. and Don Cherie in, in Miami. But anyway, they had a show on Oxygen called Rich in Faith, I think it was. And it was his idea. We had gone to a VU conference and in the back talking and that kind of thing. People need to see your family. And I was like, wait, what do you mean see my family? <laughs> and so he was just saying just, you know, life ministry, you know, the comedy, the the ups and the downs, the highs and the lows. So that docu-series was literally about people sending in their stories, asking for his help. And the family dynamic was in the background. Mm -hmm. But what we learned was the the episodes about the family were the ones that had more viewers, had more replays and had more strength Um, because people, they they liked the stories, but they were more interested in how do you do what you do? Who is she? Why did you choose her? And who are the little monkeys that y'all are raising and y'all don't do me because I can call my baby monkeys y'all can't (laughs) but um you know what I'm saying so I I, like they want to know about your family and so book of John Gray I think it was great I think it um could have had an opportunity to evolve more had all of this happened right. on Book of John Gray, you oh, know, Lord, it would have been amazing. Listen, this, that would have taken to the, to the next level. Yes. I mean, it was really that, <laughs> that, that's how I, well, first of all, I found out about John Gray because I think it was a show called The Preachers. Mm-hmm. And that was when the same year my platform started. Okay. Of course, I've been talking about 2010, but it officially started in 2016. Mm-hmm. So their show, T.D. Jakes show he had, every, and I began to review them and all the new music. I mean, gospel music was booming at the time. Yeah, evolving Ta- really good. Tasha Cobbs at the top of it. Yeah. You know, but everybody was just, it, it was a lot to discuss. And although I was discussing pol- politics, sports, and then pop culture and entertainment, and the pop culture and entertainment part, is where the church would show up. Yeah. And it began to be my niche. And that show was very interesting to me. The Preacher's show yeah. was, to me, was very good. I love that show. I did not like show. the name. Yeah, I, I like love the, the show um, because we had four black men who happened to be preachers, but they're men first yeah. with intellectual abilities to see life through, you know, objectivity, perspective, beyond a pulpit. So I didn't like the name preachers because it's already, you know, sends a message to people to click by it because you think you're going to get preached to. It was actually a very amazing show of four men, all flawed, you know, in whatever regard they were in, but it was strong and powerful because we had never seen it that way. And the guy at the time, Roger Ailes, I think Bob Ailes Mm -hmm. was the one who was really um, pushing for it. And he passed away um, towards the end of it. They were using the girls from the real set at the time they were on vacation. So that's the set they were using. And it was beautiful. Mm -hmm. I loved Every bit it of it. It was absolutely a good show. It was a Honestly, great, great show. It was a great show. And, and to be on Fox, yeah. you know, it 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 did it did numbers, it did great things. Mm-hmm. But I think that God's timing is everything. And I feel like it ran the summer it was supposed to run. Mm-hmm. And if there was a revisitation of it, it would look differently and be called something yeah. different. But it was a great show. It really was a great show. I, I, somebody need to I mean to really maybe rebrand and try that again, maybe not TV, but streaming. Yeah. Give it, yeah. give it another name. Yeah. But that's when I, when he began to stand out to me, mm-hmm. I didn't find out till later that he could sing, <laughs> that he did comedy. I didn't find all of that till later on. Child, so. He was all that, all that stuff. But see how I met him was he was helping the youth at new birth oh, okay. and I was helping the youth at new birth. And you were, so, da- you were dancing at Bishop. Ed I was, right? okay. yeah, I was a dance leader. 
um, and he was on staff there for the youth. So our our areas would collide for Youth Sunday. Youth Sunday at New Birth back then was just yeah. everybody loved it. So it was what songs are we singing? What are the dancers going to do? What are the um, steppers going to do? And the drama team. And it all would be a collaborative effort to, you know, support whatever Bishop was going to preach that weekend. But and, and, and John comes in the room. He's like, are the dance leaders here? I, I didn't have a name. It was, yeah, you know, me and Tamara raised our hand, you know, dance leaders here, step leaders here, everybody's here. And then he would give the vision and we would run with it. And so that's kind of how our world started colliding. But I was just working in my purpose. I was working and living in Marietta. I am a respiratory care practitioner. I would usually be on call while I was at new birth, have to leave, go see a patient and then come back. Um, so there were so many things happening at once. And I was just like, he was would always kind of like walk by and roll his eyes at me. I'd be like, child, please, you know, whatever. I had literally just, you know, ended a relationship with a human being. <laughs> wait a minute. I thought wait, wait, with wait, him. Wait. Yeah. I ain't never heard of it. We'll refer to her as, as a human. It's a nice way. <laughs> a human being who I was supposed to marry. He's a nice guy. I'm not tripping. Okay, he okay. really is. We we it just wasn't it wasn't us. Yeah, right, right, right. Um, I took a ring from him twice. You mm. know, I was engaged to the same person twice. So we can come back for that. We'll come back for another interview for that. <laughs> How you do that, sugar? But it's okay. Um, so I was in that vein of I'm not getting married. I'm sick of it. I'm chilling. I'm going to work. I'm going to go to school because I was in school at Strayer as well after FAMU. And then I'm going to go to church and I'm going to serve and whatever God does. And while I'm doing either of these, mm -hmm. you know, I'll, I'll embrace that. I was like, God, you're going to have to come sit on my bed and tell me that person is the one because I'm not for it right now. I'm just really tired. And so who asked you to go out first? OK, um, John is. Um, He's extra. I think we all know that. Um, but he asked me in the hallway. I had choreographed a piece to uh, Vanessa Bell Armstrong's Nobody But Jesus. Mm -hmm. And um, that particular piece set off literally the church. Holy Spirit was bananas mm -hmm. in new birth. Mm -hmm. um, the dancers got ha like everybody and Bishop. He ended up not preaching. The message that Sunday was the dance. Wow. And it came from from my heart. <laughs> I sat with it, choreographed it, worked on it. So in the hallway after that, you know, because, again, it was we worked there and he said, hey, um, let me ask you a question about that dance. He was like, you dance with such passion. What is that? Like, where did that come from? I was like, you don't want to know about that dance. <laughs> You don't, sir. <laughs> and so, <laughs> so he was like, no, 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 for real, for real. Tell me, tell me. Cause you know, I walk by and I watch you with the kids and I watch you with the adults and teaching everything. Where did that come from? Mm -hmm. And I told him, I was like, I've been dancing since I was three. I was dancing at a wedding reception. My mom said, somebody said, put her in dance. She put me in dance and here we are, mm -hmm. you know? Um, and I love it. It's very much a part of who I am, but he was like, okay. So I shared it with him. He said, let me, can I borrow your phone? So I gave him my phone. Child. He called himself. So he's, you know, so my number would show up. Yeah. And he was like, hey, this is wifey's phone to his own oh, voicemail. My and then he gave my phone back. I was like, so you stole my phone number? Uh -huh. He was like, yeah, I just like to talk more about the dance. I was like, oh, okay. Uh, Child. Uh. So I took my phone and kept it moving, you know, oh. and we that's how it happened. So later that evening, he texted and asked if I could speak. I said, OK. And then he waited a couple of hours. I was like, either you're going to call or I'm going to bed because I have patients to see in the morning. So he called and we ended up talking for a really long time that night. I was so tired. <laughs> he was like, God, let me make the right decision. I don't want to kill nobody today. <laughs> so um, it, that's how it started. And it was a friendship. To be honest, Larry, he, he was single. He was not just with the youth, but he was the singles minister as well. And I was I saw a lot of wanna boos. There were multiple of them yeah. at New Birth and Beyond. Yeah. And so I was like, oh, it'd be nice if he get married to somebody. I was picking them out, too. I was like, <laughs> if he ever asked me, I'm going to tell him, she's nice. What about her? <laughs> you know, that kind of thing. So when you say first date, he was my friend because he was traveling in and out of New Birth as well. Yeah. He was at that time, heavy on comedy yeah. before he embraced the pastoral side. So, mm -hmm. um, which 
is the trick of God as well, because I was like, who, who finna marry a pastor? Yeah. Me? Yeah. Aventure that's gonna drop it when I hear Beyonce? I got seven <laughs> tattoos. You know, I, you, you for real or you playing? Like, what is happening right now? Like, I love God and all of that, but God also loves the me that he created. So I didn't want to shift that. I'm not shifting that. One of the questions that the patrons <laughs> wanted to know, you, you have practically already answered. They wanted to know, did you want- No, sir. To be a no, ma'am. No, sir. No dog. No cat. No. Wow. No. Do you want to be one now? I'm fine with it. Okay. I was already that. It's like God, God, you're who God says you are, whether you embrace it or not. Mm -hmm. That's a lesson um, for me. Whether we are leading a church like I've been pastoring all my life with my life. Mm -hmm. I didn't know that's what it was. Mm -hmm. So I was the one at school. If I had the extra quarter for my friend I would I would be the one to get in trouble my mom would be like where's your allowance I'd be like well I shared it mm -hmm. she's like she's telling my dad that's just who she is wow. like I would be getting in trouble because I would come home she's like you had money for the week where's your money and I would have shared it you know and then you know the heart that just was natural to just kind of embrace people and love on people it was always there and it'll always get me in trouble mm -hmm. like People would take that for granted. Well, see, that same thing happened with me. And what I, what um, Karen is her name, Karen Taylor, in 2018, I went to her for a period of months for counseling. I'm the exact same way. Yeah. Um, but what I have learned, and if I be 100% honest, um, I'm almost 80% at creating boundaries yeah. sometimes i still have to bite it's time. hard yeah because i i don't i don't have boundaries the way that i should yeah but i've recently had to learn some hard lessons to implement them yes yeah. to implement them now and protect your heart absolutely yeah you have yeah, to i mean because i mean what is your sign what's your sign a sagittarius a sagittarius i was in love with the sagittarius yes that's the beyonce <laughs> and what is john's sign he is cancer he's a that makes sense. He's June 26th. Oh my God. I mean, he's an emotional guy. And I'm December 15th. That's next Thursday, yeah, next if Thursday. you would like to. Um, <laughs> so into my ministry with uh, a gift card to Olive Garden because I love, I love I Olive love Garden. Garden too. I mean, people, you know. They, they say it's Americanized. Yeah, I, don't right. I don't care. Give like me the that. American Italian Olive Garden yeah. any day in the bridge. And the endless salad. I absolutely yes. love it. It's the best. Now, but you, no, they now, want to be a first lady. Now, you're known now as John Gray's wife. You're now starting to become your own. You know, the, the controversy has really highlighted you, not just him. Is that how you want to be known as John Gray's wife? Um, I happen to be John Gray's wife, but I'm Aventure first. Mm -hmm. I'm a woman first before I'm a mom. I'm a woman first before I'm a wife. I'm a woman, a human being who has feelings, who has a heart, who cries and who yells and who screams and who laughs and who does everything like everybody else. I think that people mistake the fact that you lead a church, that you're you're somehow immortal like you're somehow you know immune to those things i i have feelings like everybody else and what i've come to realize about me is that i had to learn i said god apparently this is what you wanted for me so you have to embrace that i i happen to be john gray's wife but i have to remind myself that i'm aventer and i was aventer first mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying <laughs> and who Aventer Monique is, is a girl who was born and raised in Dothan, Alabama, with about 60 or so thousand people. I'm from Alabama. I have a farm. You know, uh, I was raised with cows, chickens and the collard green patch. You understand what I'm saying? That's right over the state line because I'm in what's called the panhandle. So you're 15 minutes from Florida, 20 from Georgia, whichever way you go. And I'm just a country girl who who loves God and loves people. Mm -hmm. And it's like, where does she come from? He, he, even John gave me that word as exotic. I said, you better know it. There's <laughs> nobody like me anywhere. And yeah. that's not conceit. That's not arrogance. Yeah. That's not pride. I said, you wonder people want to know where strength comes from. You're going to have to ask God mm -hmm. about me. <laughs> you think I didn't want to get up yeah. out of the bed? 
but somehow got up. Mm-hmm. They had two, four little people, four little eyes right. waiting to right. see what mommy was going to do. Right. The, the, when the controversy first hit, this is the first story I, I covered. Everybody was going crazy because of the love or the admiration or the honor that he decided to show you after eight years of marriage. marriage. And I was live, and this is how the the person that just wants to rena- <laughs> remain nameless found me because I said, <laughs> I was married almost 20 years. <laughs> there ain't no way in hell after eight years that I'm going to go and buy this expensive car for my wife. I said, he done did something. That's, that's, that's what I said. I said, he done did something. And he feel guilty and he know he got a good woman. So he is going to go get a car to let her know, you know, it's what she like, you know, it's what she loved. And I, and I was serious when I said it. Of course, I was making light of it. And that's when I received the call from the girl who was, I'm going to say her name. I, I promise that I will never say her name, but I'm going to say her name. I'm going to go ahead and say her name tonight. <laughs> I drive one. <laughs> right. Me and too. you do too. <laughs> yeah. So Portia, <laughs> she, she, she called me and she was like, I need to tell, no, actually it was her friend. Doesn't say another name. I don't this know who that exclusive. person is. I don't know who that the, is. It was her friend, Sandy. Hmm. Sandy called and she was telling me about her friend that's in a relationship with John. And I said, okay, I get all kind of calls all the time. We were in a relationship with her. <laughs> see, but see, I'm gonna get you to explain. But I'm trying to explain we. how it happened. So when she was telling me this, and she wasn't just telling me about Pastor John, she was telling me about some other preachers because they were like somehow another these girls get together, you know. And I think they may have been massage therapists. I have them. So I didn't really believe it because <laughs> most of the time people tell me stuff. I don't care how salacious it is. I just don't believe it. If you don't have a receipt, I'm not talking about text messages. I'm talking about video or some audio. Mm, I don't really believe it. Mm-hmm. And it wasn't public. So I was, really wasn't interested in it. But then the other platform started say, speculating the same thing that there was some lady and he was covering up and all of that. And I said, I don't think that's true. So let me call that girl back and find out. And so eventually she convinced Portia to talk to me. And when she did, she started sending me all of this stuff that let me know that there was some kind of relationship and some kind of, of dealing. I did not know, having a contact with you, did not know what you knew and did not know. Mm-hmm. So in my mind, I'm like, what in the world? This man moving like this with this chick and he married. So I came live and I talked about the car and I said, now this is what I found out. And she still wasn't dealing with me open. So mm-hmm. then the next time I talked about it, by this time she came on and she talked ev- eventually. And then the other lady from the Stella Wars talk, you know, it was just thing after thing after thing. Let me clarify something about my vehicle. So one of our connectivity points was cars mm-hmm. from the beginning. Yeah. Um, my dad and I, that was our love language. So he taught me about cars at an early age. I started driving at nine. Don't judge, you know, my parents. I was driving in the country on the dirt roads. You know, I love driving. I love cars. Like that's a hobby for me. So I can tell you the year of a car based on the body or the lights and the years that it changed. Like every four years you get a new body style or every three based on who the brand of the car. So when we started conversing, we would talk about cars all the time. That was cars and it was songs, um, artists, you know, those were, those were conversation piece, pieces for us. We're low key car dealers. Like we mm-hmm. love, we know when the appreciation, <laughs> depreciation is going to hit, flip out of that one, get mm-hmm. another one. You know, that's just, I've had, and if I can be honest for, I think this is the first time I've ever said this publicly is that I've had more cars than years here. No. Y'all just saw the the Urus. <laughs> you hear Lamborghini and you think it's geez, people like he can't fit in that. No, Urus was um, breaking out their new SUV. Mm-hmm. It had crackers, car seats. It, like it was, it was just a car, mm-hmm. but people took it to level. It didn't cost much more than a random Range Rover, mm-hmm. but the name just sent people to right. a place. And the car was ordered 
earlier that year because it was going to take the year to make. We were invited to cover some players for the NBA um, All-Star that year, earlier in the year. And in the lobby of that hotel, they were sharing this car. Mm -hmm. So I went and built it that day on faith. That's number one, because I knew it was an expensive car. I went over. I was like, oh, let's go design this car. He was like, for real? You know, and I guess he was behind the scenes Mm -hmm. dealing and given you had to give some little deposit. thousand dollars. Yeah, some little deposit. (laughs) And he was like, if I can't afford it when it's done, you know, Mm -hmm. we won't get it. They'll sell it. I mean, and we always operated on faith like that. He told me the night he proposed to me, he was like, can you go on an adventure with me? Sometimes we'll have faith. I mean, sometimes we'll have money. Sometimes we won't, you know, sometimes we'll know what we're doing. Sometimes we won't. I said yes to that, but I balk at it because I'm a planner. I like to to plan and to see ahead. So he has stretched my faith. And then I have kind of reined him in with Mm -hmm. all of the adventure. And so we make each, you know, we kind of meet in the middle. Mm -hmm. There's a happy medium there. So when people kept saying an apology car, I was like, you got, I mean, I have receipts from the car being built in right. January, mm-hmm. February, mm-hmm. top of February in the same year yeah. of the renewal and all of that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. So um, when you talk about this particular person, um, she was somebody from home and it was, and we do have the savior mentality sometimes. Mm-hmm. So we have given my exes, to, you know, mm-hmm. Cash app, 500, 200. Hey, this, you know, her and her daughter, da, 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 you want, yeah, send it. Or you send it from my phone, whatever. So I participated. Mm. Um, it's just that if you get that, how are you doing? And the answer is my wife is getting on my nerves mm. and you start getting that little wedge mm. issue happening. That's how that happens. Maliciously, no. There are psychological and physiological stimulus stimuli that happen. You don't know when they're going to occur. You don't have the language for it and you don't have control over when they come up and when they pop up. What happens is in a, in a marriage is that the worst part of you is going to come out because you're in community with somebody. Mm-hmm. Did I see that coming? No. Did he see it coming? No. But when you have a suppression of if you weren't the most popular at a point, if you weren't the one who was sought after, when that comes up and you're not ready, then that's going to be a road mm-hmm. that you head down. I <laughs> did not know that's what it was at first, because at first I'm out. That's what yeah. you do. You know, you like, so I'm sorry, at, what is happening so, right so now? So that first occurrence with Portia, is, were, were you like, I'm out? Or, or were you like, okay, that's one mess up. I forgive you. Yeah, because I knew that there wasn't sex. Like, I don't understand. And, and you know, for people, it's to each his own. Right. Um, for me, if you are going to exchange body fluids, I'm done. Like, I'm, <laughs> I can't. You might be yeah. able to do that. Right. It is harder when you think that somebody has your ear because that's more emotional. Yeah. There's that emotional attachment is like, Ooh, wait, wait a minute. Am I not doing something? And I'm, this is the part where I take ownership. When I had my son, my husband was isolated. He was over mm-hmm. there and me and my baby were over here. The heaven was You're somewhere. grown. The heaven was somewhere. You're grown. You can take care of yourself. You can fix it. He needs me. He needs all of me because he's new. And so I had to apologize to my husband for not being the present wife he needed when I first had my son. And I needed to put that in check and get that in balance. So I'm pretty sure I wasn't meeting the needs that he had Mm -hmm. the way he needed me to when I first had my baby, Mm -hmm. because it was all about him. He was the one that needed every part of me. Mm -hmm. And so with, with that situation, I'm like, I knew all about that. Everybody's taking it out of context and everything but when he opened the door to start saying little stuff about me some of it yes but some of it embellished Mm -hmm. you know because I asked you specifically and you could tell me the truth it's up to me what I do with it um you know all of the stuff that the friend was saying because you know I heard some of it some of it I didn't because I needed to protect my peace um from that point I was just like I don't recognize who they're talking about because they can't be talking about me because I know that that's not what's happening here. But if you needed to allow yourself to say that to feel better about what you were doing in the moment. okay, okay. you know, we're having a real, real conversation. But no, the add ons. Yeah, no. 
And I think, and, and you know, I'm not going to call the girl thirsty. I really have prayed for her, whoever mm-hmm. else in this vein, who, whatever they do, mm-hmm. I don't have no judgment. I hope you get healed from whatever it is you're at a deficit in. So, um, that's, so that's Portia. So I see your approach with that. Then the lady at the Stella Awards, um, I don't know if you remember that, but she had his T-shirt, took pictures of all of that in the room. There was a room, I, I guess, just talking. And however, and was right after that. And I went live and talked about that. So he had a flight. And this person who knew a mutual friend of mm-hmm. ours who will remain nameless, mm-hmm. he was leaving out. The person was coming in yeah. to that same place. And so what he left in there was what he left in there. So, of course, it's popping. Right. Oh, look. Uh, what yeah, she a, came directly to me. Yeah, because it's it's exciting. You know, people people love that kind of stuff. He was leaving out wee hours of the morning, that person coming into that same room that belonged to somebody else. Right. You understand what I'm saying? Like, it's, it's so many layers. And I don't, I don't want to do the details thing right. because I, I actually don't care. Right. But what was your conversation? Like, for a woman who's watching who has the same situation. In fact, let's say this. Your situation is not as bad as most, what a lot of women have to deal with people, because their husband people, is actually It's bad. Sex. Let me tell you what's hard for me. It's hard that people, because people really believe that his that he had intercourse. Right. Well, see, well, I, well, let me say this. I believed it. Let me tell you why I believed it at first before I was able to talk to him. Because it makes sense. Right. So I told him, you open yourself up right. you should have done it. At this point, right. like, I right. mean, th- right. there are some people who will never believe you didn't. Mm-hmm. What I can tell you the truth is he talked too much. Mm-hmm. You talked too much. Yeah. And you, the guy gave you the ears for your wife to hear that. Mm-hmm. But because there was something inside of you that needed to be healed that had nothing to do with me, I was inheriting it like so many mm-hmm. women. You think it's you or men if it's mm-hmm. your woman doing the mm-hmm. same thing. You know, this was some, these were some things that I had to go to God on and then I had to be therapied and counseled through. Mm-hmm. So what was the, com- was that your conversation after this, the second one, the Stella Award, and then there was the other lady that went to another vlogger, but e- eventually I, t- I did talk about it a little bit. What was your conversation on the, on the back end to him? What were you saying to him? I was asking him, so I said, I by no means think that I'm perfect, mm-hmm. but um, if there is a way that you would like to escape the relationship, this isn't it. You know what I'm saying? So I'm going to give it to you. Mm-hmm. You know, you want to be weekend daddy. You want to be holiday daddy. That's fine with me. Um, I love our family unit. It's great. I was, oh gosh, I probably shouldn't. I'm going to say it anyway. Mm-hmm. I was good because, you know, people love to throw ooh status and money. I was fine before I met you. <laughs> Did you just not hear me say? Yeah. Yeah. It wasn't just one farm. It Let's was just put it like this. Your parents have money. They, I was fine. <laughs> okay. I was fine. Right. Um, I love what we've built together. And when, and I, if I can tell you, honestly, I think we talked about this on a marriage panel. Um, he had his successes before I, I arrived. Mm-hmm. And then God will do that stripping so mm-hmm. that you won't do the come into my world and, you know, be glad to be here. Mm-hmm. We had negative $11 like two or three weeks in. Yeah. I remember he had a home in um, in Nashville and and he I, I was like, wait, what's going on with the account? <laughs> and um, <laughs> it was an electricity bill due and I paid it. Yeah. For a house that I hadn't even lived in yet. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So anything that has been built has been like in the background. He right. wasn't good in business. So the guy brought you that. Right. So I brought, you know, what I brought. I told you I, was, I hadn't been perfect or mm-hmm. whatever. I do understand what he needed from me when I had my baby and I wasn't there. Yeah, yeah. Um, but you're saying the conversation in the background, it was just like, what exactly is happening? Why do you need, feel the need that you mm-hmm. have to communicate? Right. Because what happens is you feel is, betrayed. By yeah, that. it 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 hurts. Mm-hmm. You know, you throwing stuff, you flipping all out because you think everything is good. Because I'm like, you've said a lot of stuff about me to people that seems great. Mm-hmm. That's the truth. But this is also the truth. Mm-hmm. There's a little boy. Who needs to reconcile the four year old, the 16 year old, all of the places where he was broken and hurting, Mm -hmm. because all of that comes into the marriage with you. Mm -hmm. Everything that I thought I knew good 
is still that. But there's also places. Again, you have neural pathways, you have this mental instability in the regard of how you were raised. You got that stigma attached of church boy. So yeah. you've lived up to an expectation of church boy based on how you were raised. Right. right? So you get older and you try to distance yourself from it. But there's that distance between the suppression of the actual you and the one that God is calling you to. Mm -hmm. And so whoever is there, your children, your mother, your wife, your spouse, your husband, whoever it is, they're going to get the brunt of that. Mm -hmm. And so that's what I've experienced. Right. And for me, it's been my decision to stand by my husband. So I'm not letting any more. Was that hard? Oh my God. Uh, I, I mean, I, I snapped. That's what I want to know. The Dolphin, the girl from Dolphin, I did see. she come in the room and nah, 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 nah. it was all of that. <laughs> and stuff I'm not proud of, yeah. you know. But it's real. But it is very real. I'm not some docile, you know, I've mm -hmm. been called, you know, she lives literally is so toxic. She's going to teach people about toxicity. No. I'm going to teach you how to be true to who you are no matter what because I don't let the outside circumstances define me. If I have a threshold, I have a limit mm -hmm. and I have a ceiling. Everybody does. Mm -hmm. Right. But what I learned and what I knew after prayers is that it wasn't malicious. There is something that needs yeah. to happen yeah. in him because is he anointed? Yes. Mm -hmm. Is he a prophet? Yes. Have people been saved? Yes. We done gave cars and homes away, but everybody want to talk about the one car that costs <laughs> 200, you know, whatever thousand right. dollars. And um, I think for me, what's freeing is knowing that he's gotten free and, and still getting free. Yeah, yeah I see. I, and we want to get to that and to this, this health scare that we had. And what, how did you deal with that? But before we get to that, what steps did you take to heal? Because see, away. Oh, oh you so you left outside home. of the home. Okay, so that we were created together. So yeah, you have to go. <laughs> I did. Now you might stay. You had to go. I went because you were talking. You get yeah, what I'm saying? Right, and right. talking about what could happen. Right, right, right. But you know what? Right. But he had no legs behind it. Right. It's the truth. There were none. It was just. And let me say that because I want to be very clear, and I want to say this in the camera that there was a time when I thought that he was lying because he, he was lying. So I just figured he lying about that too. Mm -hmm. But when I was trying to get evidence, you know, so there was nothing that was there. It was only conversation, mm -hmm. you know, and, and FaceTimes with all, in all of the situations. So I'm not going to hold something in my heart just because it's, I just want to believe it. If there's no receipt for it, yeah. then I do. I believe what you believe that he never had intercourse with anyone. Was he inappropriate? Absolutely. Yeah. He was. was it disrespectful and disloyal? And oh betrayed? God! It's it hurt. It hurt was. me to my soul. It hurt me to my soul. It hurt me to my soul. But then I had to pick myself up because there were four eyes needing mommy. Okay, so I did not dismiss my feelings. I allowed myself to feel all of the answering people and. What's the little guy named Derrick Jackson who did his whatever? Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Sir? Yeah, because he, he dragged. You tried to jack, drag my husband and you. Yeah, that's You what understand happened. what, you know what I'm saying? And then for some of the people, as we talked about this as well, some of the people that we love and know couldn't embrace or couldn't run to him to comfort mm -hmm. or be like, man, what's up with this? Like, this doesn't seem like you whatever because they in their own stuff. Mm -hmm. And this isn't to throw off on anybody. This is our situation. We're talking about us. Mm -hmm. But there are so many people who paid it away or played it away. Absolutely. So, <laughs> I mean, and people we know and people we love, but it also just speaks to if we turned on the story of your life mm -hmm. from its entirety, mm -hmm. this is a snapshot yes, in a greater picture. Yeah. And so when I began to talk about how he had gotten better and, and, and everything in the converse, in my conversation has been pro John Gray ever since, because I, I believe in the restoration of everybody. And we're we all, all need human. grace. We and all we're need all grace. absolutely human. I and, don't have no grace for sex. <laughs> We're we're done. Uh, okay. So I come on with that receipt if you got it. You understand? Because I know you don't. Right, right. It's not that. I I hate that you were talking. 
Yeah. You know, and feeling like you needed another voice to speak to something you were trying to believe about yourself mm -hmm. that your wife has already said. Mm -hmm. Um, but there are so many men that are trying to figure out this manhood thing and yeah, trying yeah. to figure out how to escape yeah. from the reality of life. And sometimes and, there's and an you, escape and you, but I'm gonna say this. in a person who's not in your home right? who, who can yes. sell you on, oh, look at that beautiful message when I'm gonna be like, I net about that trash. You right. get what I'm uh -huh. saying? Like I make it real <laughs> and about these but kids, it's not just I'm, me, it's us, I'm, you know, that kind I'm of thing. About a high profile person. You're going to want to escape your life. And I know it looks good from the outside, how wonderful it is. Anybody but, who but, squeals and wants to jump up and down for a platform have no clue what it have is. No clue. I just had this conversation before the thing because I, I, you have to choose your escapes. Choose wisely and the people that you are taking with you that know who you are, know your calling, and will help hold you to a standard when you get dizzy. I mean, because every artist, creator, John is like a triple threat. Comedy, preaching, songwriting, sing. There's he was also hurting for a really long time that right. I had no idea about. Right. So right. once I learned so what it was in counseling, yeah, because I mean, I couldn't see this. Yeah. And for other people to be like, where's your discernment? Well, where's your discernment for your husband and your wife that uh -huh. your stuff hadn't come out yet? Yeah. You get what I'm saying? It just as sure as we live, there's going to be a, a reckoning. Mm -hmm. If if you are true to who God wants you to become, mm -hmm. it has to get uprooted. Absolutely. It has to that's come a word. to light. That's a word. You cannot heal if you don't deal. And I think what he had been doing, mm -hmm. and I know that's cliche, was covering it up with the anointing, covering it up with the messages, covering it up that he was hurting and broken and he couldn't. He was the leader of the family. Mm -hmm. He was doing his thing and God was opening doors mm -hmm. and he was hurting mm -hmm. and isolated and in pain that I couldn't mm -hmm. even imagine mm -hmm. he was in. Mm -hmm. And for a man to admit that, that's hard. It's mm -hmm. really hard. Mm -hmm. And so when it comes out in levels like this and all of that kind of stuff, it gets distorted for the yeah, world it does. to bring judgment to your home mm -hmm. when your mm -hmm. house is on display and everything like and that. I want to I say this to you, and I'm, I'm, I don't know if I have said this before, but whatever I said and done that caused you pain and your husband and your children pain, I am so sorry for that because... I did not know how to do this job and I had to learn how to do it. And, and I know now, but that was in the middle of me learning my own self. Yeah. I felt yeah. like, cause Larry, I have to tell you, I was so upset with you. <laughs> I was so upset with you. I didn't want to hear your name, any of that. But the truth is, is my husband and I talked one night. He's like, you know what? I thank God for him. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of what turned it. Mm -hmm. He was like, because I don't know where I would have ended up if I didn't get like this. Type. He's like, even though most of it is salacious mm -hmm. and it's embellished mm -hmm. for whatever. Mm -hmm. He said, the part that is true is that I was talking and I shouldn't have been. Mm -hmm. And I was making promises and I shouldn't have been. Mm -hmm. And all of that kind of stuff. He said, regardless of how. It needed to happen. You told me that. It needed to happen. Mm -hmm. And so, yes, I was like, gosh, you know, I have kids. Does anybody care? Does mm -hmm. anybody care that, you know, X, Y, and Z? It wasn't about hiding. It's about, like, nobody wants their life just publicized for the world and everybody to critique it, especially when you can't control. Like, nobody cares about the adjustment in the story. Nobody mm -hmm. cares about the truth. The they truth. care about the part that where's the tea and you know, you when, know. And when i went back into the story after talking to you and him off camera and having a couple of conversations and i came back to say the update and what happened you know and explain what part was true what parts were not you know Porsche lied about this or sandy however and they embellished and however i watched my audience i don't know if there are people who were just coming through or was it my audience yeah turn on me you know to be oh. like uh, uh you just believe in the lie. I'm like, what the hell? If, if somebody say I'm sorry and then they change their way, are we just supposed to continue to do, do that? And so this last thing that another vlogger covered, and when I covered it, I I covered it 
differently than what I did before because I have more information and I'm, I know how to do my job now. I can give you the funny. I can give you the salacious if it's true, you know, and do comedy with it without killing somebody. Yeah. You know, and, you know, I don't know what that thirst and that appetite is to see people hurting is for us as people. We got to check that in ourselves. So for me, um, I'm not interested in what people think about me as much as I care that four and two to think what they think about me and God. You know what I'm saying? Like I need my children to say to be like, mommy was Proverbs 31. She she held it down. Yeah. Um, she popped off, but she also brought it <laughs> so back. Did the children, how did, were the children affected by this? Did they see you I don't think off? they know oh, really? much. Yeah. Wow. I think now it makes me nervous because they're, they're, on, they're able to X, Y, and Z. But the truth is, is he's ready to address them. Mm, you wow. know, God is prepared and therapy and counseling is prepared you for where people missed it. Some of the most amazing people have terrible stories. Mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, when Kobe died, yeah. he was elevated yeah. to the highest honors. Nobody wants to remember what happened yeah, right, way right. back when right. it happened, yeah. but he also turned. He you get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. It did happen because he's human yeah. and everything was right there for him, you know, yeah. <laughs> and so many. Yeah, you know, same um, King. Yes. Yeah. Oh my God. I yeah. mean, every, I mean, if, if you dissect every human individual's life, there's something there mm -hmm. that you don't want people, excuse me, to know yeah. or to have an inside of you on. Cause you want them to know you for the good, mm -hmm. but what makes you good sometimes were some things in you that needed to That's be the truth. Up, right, That's uprooted the truth. and for you to embrace, to continue to be good. So I, I'm looking at the questions and you answered this. Why have you stayed? You've answered that. Why you stayed? Um, yeah, I didn't feel released to go. Right. It's not what, from God. Right. What steps did you take to heal? I think you would spend that therapy. Yes. Therapy, counseling, and just very real conversations. Answer me. I don't want to hear from anyone else. This is me and you. We're mm -hmm. talking. You and I are here. No one else is here. I'm you're six, three, I'm five, five and a half. I can't beat you. You know what I'm saying? Even though I try. Um, <laughs> so, you know, so let's have a real conversation. And even still now, the conversation is always, is this what God wants for us? Is this what, you know, what God wants for our children? Is this what God wants for us as individuals? We're, we, we still go through and talk through yeah. because that's real. You yeah. fall in and out of love. You evolve. I'm not married to the John I married in 2010. Yeah. He's not married to the Aventure he met in 2009. Yeah. We are different people. And with each situation, whether good or bad, or each elevation or each demotion or contraction or expansion, there are different sides of you that will be triggered. Mm. I didn't know it inside of me. Some of the things that I've said, I didn't even think I was capable of saying. Yeah. Now, you know? I was actually on the phone um, and I heard you, you know, it was me, you, John, and, and someone else. And I heard you being a hundred percent dope yeah, hundred percent. Now, what, um, I said people don't want to know fam. You have <laughs> like I can get there if I need to. Yeah. I have to die to her. I have to make her die daily. Yeah. It's in here. Every version of you that you're not proud of is still there. It's yeah. the one that you feed the most, and you're using and, them all. Every version of yourself, you're using some aspect of of that to to show up, right? And don't contribute into the community as you do. In the midst of all of that, you guys also had to war with your church situation. <sighs> that was horrendous when you were warring with the carpenters <sighs> as it relates to the church that y'all took over. Now, that was an entire different battle. And it was happening all at the same time. It was time. happening at the same time. And it also made the people who had kind of made up their mind about John being this horrible person mm. um, believe them. Mm. And they're liars. And mm. I can say that, yeah. <laughs> you know, and some of it, some of it, I don't even know if they're truthful with each other about right. the husband and wife. Right. I'm not here to bash them. Right. I think it's, a, it's, I think it's, story. I think it's very clear yeah. what happened right. at this point, whether it is to people or not. Cause y'all won the case, right? Mm -hmm. We're there. <laughs> you wanted us to leave and you said we were leaving, right? right? Mm -hmm. 
but y'all are renting across the street. Mm-hmm. So there, I mean, you can go figure. Yeah. So. The, I remember that I talked about that. I covered that and everybody wanted me to throw y'all away, but I'm unbiased. I'm, I'm looking at court documents. I'm reading mm-hmm. and I'm comparing. I said, mm, yeah. okay, this is looking interesting. And the whole setup, in my opinion, the whole setup was improper from the beginning. It was the using black talent, a black body, in order to do what master needed to be done. And I couldn't can, can help but see it that way. Am, am I saying... I am, think, I, am I choosing size? I'm not. But, no, I but think that I people think. think that he was given keys to a paid off right. building. That's, that's how it thought. was portrayed. That's how it was no, portrayed. No, he took keys to a $15 million debt that that's you right. left. And that was the dumbest thing that John Gray ever done. I want to say this about <laughs> that because I asked him and, and this was on our show as well. I was like, are you sure? Cause uh, mm. so you know I'll ride with you to the wheels fall off. But what is God mm. really saying? Well, he's a he's a he has a soul heart. John has a soul. He soul. believed, and we also thought that they were gonna like not necessarily hold our hands mm. through it, but we thought they would be there for us. We thought they would show us the ropes. You know, we were coming into this new associate is not pa- senior mm-hmm. associate mm-hmm. pastor at Lakewood. As you pull up and do what they. You right. know, when they need you to preach and you go home. Are y'all still working at Lakewood? You still do the Wednesday nights there? No, you know, after the pandemic, oh. it, we were flying back and forth, but they, they shut down Wednesday services, period. Oh, so so they, they don't even do it no more. A lot of churches have went to, during the week, they're digital, they're mm-hmm. cyber, and then on Sunday. And instead of having multiple services, people are condensing to one. We're, we're starting one soon because it's just like, People are trying to find ways to reconnect with family yeah. and being in church for 900 hours ain't it <laughs> because you still leave the same. You know what I'm saying? I need you to implement what you just learned into your house. Mm. I'll say this about the, you know, that situation with the church. And We're I'll talking about Ron that. Carpenter and his <laughs> wife. What's her name, Mary? I can't remember her name. Hope. Hope. That's right. Hope um, Carpenter and what happened at Relentless. Just Google it. You'll see. But you guys, ultimately, the courts were in your favor for you guys to stay. We're there yeah. and um, we'll be there until we want to leave. Right. Not because they thought that, you know, they would run off to California while we paid the bills and then they would come back mm-hmm. as whatever. And then you'll expand it to Atlanta. Yeah. So you're still doing Greenville and Atlanta. Not now, because okay. when he got sick. Oh, that that was a big part of it. Now, how did you? OK, when he got sick, take me to that day, that Ooh. moment when you find out what happened. So he had been acting a little differently, like a different level of tired, a different level of pain um, for maybe the two weeks or so that he was verbal about it. He said it was probably like upwards of a month, but there was a different type of fatigue on him and we were bus- visiting my mother she was turning 75 so we had a little 4th of July celebration her birthday is the 8th so we did something on 4th of July for her he wasn't himself that day because she even asked me she's like what's wrong with John Mona oh lord you know, don't call me Mona um <laughs> he's like what's wrong with John what's going on he just don't seem like himself and anyway theory and ha- theory you know she booked and busy child she had stuff to do so I brought her back so she could be at ice to Greenville and he stayed he was like I'm gonna just stay here and then you know until y'all come back and I was like oh well that's different but Mm -hmm. okay but he loves my mom's house he loves her house he loves Mm -hmm. and he loves country he loves fishing like people don't know that he 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 would be content on the farm Mm -hmm. fishing Mm -hmm. that 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 speaks to Mm -hmm. his heart um, so but, his patterns changed. Mm-hmm. You know, it, it was lethargic, and then he stayed at your parents' house as opposed to going back. Mm-hmm. So that was your first. That was my first. Mm, I was like, right. something's up. And so that night, Theory and I were um, looking for a flight to come back. He was like, "Hey, I'm on my way to the emergency room," and I was like, "Who's going to the emergency room?" And he said, "I'm gonna go there. I'm gonna just take myself. You know, I just want to make sure. I just want to make sure everything is okay." Mm-hmm. So the next call I got from him, he was like, they're admitting me um, to ICU. 
and I heard his voice, you know, it was more tired. I was like, well, what is going on? I, I just didn't understand what was happening. And when I got there, like they had him completely still. Mm. This three and a half inch clot was trying to suffocate, you know, his lungs. So it was laying at a very critical place. They had some in his legs and they were saying if anything broke away from the leg and met this one, it was going to be an instant cardiac arrest. He, and they probably wouldn't be able to bring him back because of the position of it. It wasn't just a regular pulmonary embolism. It was a saddle, which means that it was riding the base of, of his diaphragm, trying to choke out his oxygen. Mm. So every time he would move or he would take the stairs or he would pull something, that pain was going through his back coming around. And it was just, it was so much. And the other scary part is that I knew exactly what they were saying. Yeah. Cause yeah. I was like respiratory, that's my uh, heart and lungs. That's mm -hmm. my thing. Mm -hmm. And so um, it was scary. I got back there. I looked at him and he was like, if by chance this is it, I was like, nope, <laughs> it ain't, <laughs> you know, I got, I didn't care. I, I, you know, calling friends, family for prayer. And it was when he released me, he was like, Hey, I just, I pray for a lot of people in my life. I've been to a lot of conferences. He was the one that asked me to post to ask for prayer. And that went viral. I, mm -hmm. I was asking for prayer because they were like, Hey, this this is rough yeah. and they were trying to figure out you know you do the clock busters and then do we do you know what do we do next what do we do because if we go in wrong and we suck and we do something and it moves and this one like everything was critical mm. everything was critical so how were you feeling oh, helpless mm. i was out of my body also trying to make sure the kids were okay. And let me tell you something about a friend, even if they are, you know, new, like in the last two, three years, I'm going to tell you something about Yandy yeah. Smith. Mm -hmm. She got my babies and she took them. Mm -hmm. They were in the pool. They were doing X, Y, and Z. She was like, Av, I know you got fans. She said, I want them, please mm -hmm. give them to me let me have them. Mm -hmm. And you, y'all, you focus there with your husband. And I felt immediate peace about it. Mm -hmm. And I mean, I'm forever indebted to her because she was saying, she said, I didn't want to tell you until it was over. She was like, your son, you know, he would be having fun. And then when he would be like, um, is my daddy okay? Mm -hmm. Cause they knew he was in the hospital. Cause I'm not lying. Mm -hmm. They didn't know what, mm -hmm. but they knew that it was keeping us away, mm -hmm. keeping us away from them. I didn't want them worried. And then they couldn't come in the unit anyway. Of course, our hospital in Dothan, before he got transported to here, to Atlanta, to Gwinnett, Northside Gwinnett. I think that's the name of it. Northside. It's, it's, it's not in Gwinnett, Gwinnett, but it's Northside Hospital. So mm -hmm. there's there's one in Gwinnett. The, oh, there may be one down there. Okay. I, I'm drawing a blank, but he was at that one, okay. the wherever that is, mm -hmm. up exit 106. Oh, Not yeah. that I mean, yeah. I just remember. Yeah. Um, but my my children, I wanted them to see him because there would be no way that I could explain you, daddy is here. Now he's not here. Mm -hmm. So they did go in, you know, they, you know, oh, that, that, that is, you know, we're, we're trusting God and daddy's going to be home soon. So that's what they knew. Um, but it was so hard for me, but I also, that was another life shifting turning point. I was like, all right, God, me and you, me and you, I said, I know what people believe about my husband, not that I care. I don't righteously give a, what people think <laughs> at this point. He's not done. Yeah, There's work to be done. His voice is still needed mm -hmm. in this earth. And it's uh, the healed voice, the one that can tell where he missed it and the one that can still prophesy and get people's souls snatched from the pits of hell. He still has work to do. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to agree with you on this. I don't feel it. Like, what is it? Because they're saying he's out of here. Mm -hmm. Any moment it could happen. I had to shave his head had it like help him go to the bath. Like I was doing all of that. And while people like, Oh, you know, Oh, this her out. Da, da, da. I'm like, really? This mm -hmm. is what, this is what you see instead mm -hmm. of a wife just standing by my husband. Cause that's what I was supposed to do. I know he would have done it for me. Mm -hmm. And so 
them trying to even doctors, a cardiologist, pulmonologist, them meeting, trying to talk about what was next for him. He's a big man. He's it's hard to scan him already. Mm -hmm. All that. He's long. He's big. And then there's there's like this one who's like, we got to do this. And another one's like, well, before we do that, we got to look at this because there are other, you know, he's been vocal about diabetes. Yeah. He's been vocal about, you know, uh, a disc in his back and like all of these different things, right. you know, case studies show different things that will work on an individual. But what they do for you may not be what they would do for me and what they do for me may not be what they do for the next person. So he was a case all on his own that's still being studied right now. Um, that clot, three and a half inches. Um, the way it was laying, it was it was supposed to get him the moment he breathed in and out. Whoa. So he had that one sharp pain in July 7th. And that's what the doctor said, that that was that was the enemy's chance then mm. to get him. And since it didn't get him, they can't stop him. Whoa. So that's where we are. So when we talk about Atlanta, that flying back and forth yeah. and all of that at low altitudes, I'm pretty sure had a lot to do yeah. with it. So we have been reimagining what that looks like probably on a different day mm -hmm. instead of trying to do both in the same, same day. day. Yeah. Exactly. Did, did you lose or gain friends through? Because we have discussed all of the three situations with the other women, the conversations we've discussed just long court battle and then the sickness you went through every last one of those and you're sitting here tonight yeah that is amazing so did you gain or lose any friends i believe the people who were surface the ones who were um champion av when all is well um probably so hmm. um but I did, I have so many people in my inbox, so many women who want their families and who have mm. noticed certain things like, oh, I think my husband needs to be seen, the X, Y, and Z and all of that. I'm not telling you what to do with your marriage. I'm telling you what I did with mine because it's mine. So I, what I can encourage you, don't be a pushover. If you feel God telling you to leave, then by all means, you do that. Mm -hmm. If he tells me to leave tonight, I'm going. <laughs> it's God in me, okay. not the masses yeah. in my relationship. And mm -hmm. so my strength, Some it says that um, our strength, his strength is made perfect in our weakness. Yeah, yeah. So in the times when I was weak, his strength rose up in me. Okay. His strength made me the Avenger, mm -hmm. not yeah. me. So I felt like I was like, obviously there's still work to be done. He, he follows the guidelines. He, you also know that when you make a, a conscious decision to turn and to work on yourself, yeah, what the enemy had, the, the enemy's playground, what had been keeping him hostage, he's finally free. It ain't nothing you can, you can make him shameful right. with. I wish, you know, I wish he shared that down the phone. He shared something from his past he has not shared publicly. And I hope one day he does because that is going to free a whole lot of people yeah. and it's going to make us understand a lot of things. Let's talk about where you are now because I was saying this, I said it on the platform, look, they told you, I said, ooh, Abington need to leave and start a church. I said, the whole church going to go to go with her. You know? Yeah, <laughs> ain't starting a church. Child. He ain't said that. God ain't told me that. Was wrong. But you did start a podcast. So tell me about the podcast. Av Unfiltered, and I'm considering changing the name to something a little bit different, but um, Av Unfiltered was birthed during the pandemic. Mm -hmm. It was kind of just a voice not 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 outside of you know me being oh yes outside of me being John's wife mm -hmm. but I think for me I wanted to talk to women to empower women to have women embrace the who that they are you're a human being not a human doing because a lot of us find ourselves lost in the doing mm -hmm. instead of just being and so I was going to be cool with being me oh gosh you're a first lady are you supposed to have that on if I want to you know, <laughs> are you supposed to? Oh, Sarita Jakes would never. I'm not Sarita Jakes. Oh, no, you're not. You know what I'm saying? Like, I love How old are you? those women. I'm 40. Oh, 
Lord Jesus. And so you're, I, young, you, you're young. How old is John? He is 49. 49. Oh, oh, so child. So you, you do all the moves in the bedroom. <laughs> <laughs> Go 49, that back hurt. The back is hurt. I'm dead. <laughs> I'm dead. I'm dead. I'm dead. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Oh Lord! So Ab, I like Ab unfiltered <laughs> because for me, for a first lady, you're totally, you're totally different. My, you met my wife. Was my come wife. on wife? No, she was. Come on wife. She was. Come on wife. She, she was. See how my you wife. said that? See how it slipped out? No, yeah, it, it slipped out. I mean, because the only woman I was married to, yeah. you know. But you, you met her. She was. She redefined first ladies and and how. They are, and you're doing the same thing. Of course, Shiny is doing the same thing. I like album because because you are off the chain. I mean, <laughs> if if I call you and if, if something has happened, I'm like da da da. You are unfiltered. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> you know, you said I have to be. Feeling? It's it's who God knew I would be anyway. It's who He made me, so I can't change into anything else. Now you evolve mm -hmm. and you grow and you mature. And you kind of rein in the areas that need yeah. to be reined yeah. in and you reset and you refocus and you recalibrate. But at the end of the day, I'm going to always be me. I'm going to be the me that makes me feel good in my skin. Mm -hmm. I got, I have tattoos. I might get another one. I got a nose ring. I might get another one. Like I'm going to drop. If you play Beyonce now, I'm going to drop it. <laughs> I'm don't, I don't want to, I don't care about your judgment because God knows me right, anyway. Right, 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 right. He knows me. He knows me because he built me. Yeah. And um, I was built for this. It's not, I, I don't want to live in perpetual pain. I want to see my husband on the other side of wholeness, whether I'm here or not. Mm. I want to, I oh, want to. Wow. And, and I think that people get lost in the when you think somebody should do X, Y, and Z. Well, I think a lot of people should do a lot of things, but I don't have the authority to speak on that. Mm. But what I will give you is my truth. I'm not dealing with sex. <laughs> I'm not dealing with you talking to people on the phone, mm. you know, anymore. Yeah, right. What we are dealing with is healing, yeah. healing in the way God wants it. Again, whether it's together or like whether that. it's apart. So that speaks to your friendship because you, a friend will say that. Yeah. So your foundation is friendship. Yeah. 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 I think that is that is. Awesome. Yeah, you have to you have to be friends and people. Oh, why are you still with him? Why are you why are you still with your husband? And he being you, <laughs> like <laughs> then he sleep with your best friend, like. Uh -huh. But you but you want to talk about oh well y'all are pastors. No, we're people. Mm -hmm. We're people. Well, you know, I'm glad you left because I, I had to I had to go. Mm -hmm. There was a time that you have to separate. Yeah. And I left. Me and my children. We got. We left. We were out of there. I had a lot of peace. But I also was asking God, what do I do aside from you, mm -hmm. anybody else and what they felt, what they thought, any other. There is a blogger. I can't remember her name. She said in a world full of Adam to Grace, be a Cardi B. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you saw that because Cardi yeah. filed for divorce. Right, she, yeah. she also recanted. She so did. can I get a new article? <laughs> you get what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> Right, yeah. Don't play with it. Let's be real. Mm -hmm. She forgave whatever that was, right. and she chose her family. Her decision. Yeah, exactly. 100%. Her decision. 100%. Yeah. I'm if not he had put his hands on you, and he had actually fucked, yeah. then I... <laughs> <laughs> if your king <laughs> went in there, if that king was if in, it that went in there, <laughs> if it was in there, yeah, right. Ab is out of there. <laughs> okay, that's what. Because I mean, I'm and, and again, even for all the smoke, I, I and I, we joke, mm. we jokingly say this right. now. I'm like, you should have done it. <laughs> You in the, in a room trying to talk somebody down because now they about to talk. Yeah, y'all should have did it. Mm -hmm. You know, um, and I don't know what the friend had in the fight. Like, I don't know what the dog, like, she was more dominant, I hear, yeah, I, than, I, than the, and, and it just makes no sense to me. But I pray for both of them. I pray for anybody who would uh, put themselves, put in themselves a inside of a know. marriage because you already you know. know. I don't care what anybody's ever said. I done said some things about my husband as well. <laughs> I have. But <laughs> I can say it. I can say it. You can't, yeah. but I can. Yeah. You know, 
um, I feel I feel liberated in understanding that I don't need the applause of men to inform me about my life. I need God to be pleased with me and two, two and four yeah. to to equal. They are little John and little Ab. They I mean, are. I mean, for real. And they run me. We not like tell me what to yeah. do. I'm just saying okay. with this and that and that and this and they 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 love people. They love life. And they want a Disney this and to go here and to go there. And I'm that like, do great. you have a job? You know, my daughter <laughs> answered me. She was like, mommy, yes, I do have a job. What's the you job? know, I'm an actress. I said, you are. <laughs> she said, I got a couple of checks. I said, you did. Uh, oh, so, yeah, you know, right. she was yes, trying to, did. you know, she was trying to convince me. Yeah, I you can know, help. She's amazing. Now, <laughs> and, and I want you guys to, to know this. And you saw this producer, Latre. Um, <laughs> She was on the phone, her, her kids. Uh, what what they got to have? She, she is a mom. A, I wrote a, um, an article years ago, a blog. It's, it was a, a article that honored what I call master moms. Mm-hmm. And most black women are yeah. master moms. You got some. You figure it out. Yeah, you got some um, that ain't worth two cents. Yeah. but Because <laughs> even with help, sometimes you still. You have to plan. You have to organize. You, help, you have to orchestrate. I can't tell it. And not I'm even here. because I also want to make sure that they realize that I'm the mom. Right. You know you what I'm saying? Get. I have to be. I have to be. And I think that your children and what they become is a great testament to who you are. But they need they need to know about the good and the bad. I don't show them just because I told Tutu where mommy missed it. Mm-hmm. We we are talking about girls and friends right now. Mm-hmm. I, to, I to, told her, you know, she's like, well, she didn't speak to me. I said, it doesn't mean they don't like you, baby. You know, I had to tell her about the word jealousy, mm-hmm. envy. I had to tell them, listen, your your parents' names may open doors for you, may close them <laughs> yeah. for you. I said, but you have a name of your own stand on. Mm-hmm. Same for John 4. I'm like, you carry the name, but you also are mm-hmm. redefining a name. And even for John, as we said about his dad, he said his dad wasn't the best yeah. dad, but he yeah. promised him on his deathbed that he would make his name great. Yeah. You know, that was that was something. Mm-hmm. So I told I told Tutu, I said, mommy dealt with um a lot of hate when I was growing up and she want to be white because she's a cheerleader and she's a dancer. I like I mm-hmm. went through those challenging times. And so now we're headed into you be sure of who God created you to be. And so you won't back down when the world starts telling you mm-hmm. who you need to be. Mm-hmm. Then the world Man, will tell you. Listen, we, we can go on and on. I mean, there's so many layers to who you are as a person. And then the things that we have seen you know, publicly, millions of us have watched your life, your show, the book of John Gray. You know, so you're you're teaching, and it doesn't matter what people, some people, say in the comment section. It really doesn't matter because you are very strong, very successful, and I only can imagine that things are only going to get better and better, and better for you. You are forced to be reckoned with by yourself. I appreciate yeah, that. Yeah, and so that that is a great thing. Yeah, I'm fine with playing the background fine with playing the side but if God wants to do this he does it in his own time I'm not you know trying I'm just being Mm -hmm. so whatever God wants for me from there I want to do that because I want it to be authentic Mm -hmm. and so many times people will make up and fabricate and shift so that they can be you know placed above and then you can't handle it you can't handle it or you get there too fast yeah exactly but you're not prepared yeah this is great okay if you are still online right now before you leave i want you to hit like and i want you to follow i want you to follow we can't see it but they're putting (laughs) now your ig i want you to go and like her ig everything that she does she always posts and announce on her ig so i want you guys to follow aventer the avenger of a real real life avenger (laughs) She loves Avenger Child. Yeah, I want you. I'm guys gonna get to... one of them bodysuits. Um, Marvel, <laughs> Dora Milaje. What's the? I'm gonna make them. them. <laughs> they, what? When they done Black Panther here, she made like seventy percent of everybody's outfit. She she can make them from from scratch. Asian lady. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. They they are beautiful. Yeah, but yeah. Okay, so we <laughs> are going to go. I hope you guys have enjoyed this. Okay, the cameras keep switching. Which one I'm looking at? (laughs) (laughs) 
<laughs> which one? Which one? Do I look at. Look, look at that shoe. Look, look, what you call them? Uh, Manolo. Manolo. That's what Oprah wear. She Manolo like, Blonde like and M. Yeah, she like that. Thirty nine and a half. If you want to buy for my birthday, uh, December fifteenth. What is it? Thirty nine is eight and a half. Well, it depends. I wear anywhere from eight and a half to nine and a half, depending mm. on who made it. Oh, okay, yeah, I got you. I got, you. I got abs, weird feet as a note in my shoes for. I mean, in my notes, so mm. I can know whatever brand, what size I'm supposed to have. So you different. have to try it on. It's know. different. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So this is what we want you guys to do. We want you right now to go and follow at Aventer Gray. Right. Uh, I am Aventer yeah. Gray. At I am Aventer Gray. At, everybody put it in the chat. At I am Aventer Gray. Go over there, show her a whole lot of love. I know you'll block everybody that's talking crazy. <laughs> <laughs> so show her. They more. can talk. I don't like that's the thing. I used to care. Yeah. And sometimes it does hurt. And other times I'm just like, okay, whatever. Because you had one when you posted. Uh -huh. I was like, I'm so flattered because you're so consumed with my so life. Like you don't have and because time <laughs> look, I saw what one person was like, because the picture is tight. Yeah. And, and, she said and, it doesn't look and like if, yeah, if you look at it. It was hate. Somebody it doesn't look like her. I um, said, nah, looks you, exactly I said, nah, like come me. Come on, nah. This is a nice photo look. on a nice angle, boo. I appreciate it because <laughs> since you said it, I'm like, oh, thank you. You know, and then kept going. You got like two followers. It's fine. Yeah. Go ahead. I, I it's don't care. It's always those type people. <laughs> or you're a frog, yeah. you know, and we can't see you. Exactly. <laughs> It's always, Keyboard bandits. Yeah, it's always that. It's so interesting to me. But we know that you're going to continue to do great things and can't wait for the next episode. App Unfiltered, you actually done shows with her husband. You know, mm -hmm. I saw that they discuss openly feelings and what they went through. So I am at symbol. I am Adventer Gray. Gray. I hope you enjoyed. Make sure you hit like before you leave. And thank you so much for watching Larry Re Live. Shout out to patrons that make things of this nature and the members of Reformation Church of and Atlanta Vanessa. that make things of Vanessa. And Vanessa, and girl, my wig. <laughs> Vanessa, honey, ain't she cute? Child? Woo, girl, I ain't never had this color. Ooh, <laughs> All right. Vanessa holding it down. Okay. Yeah, it looks good on you. Okay, see you guys later. Goodbye. <laughs> <laughs>Exclusively, it's gonna be good. Larry Live coming to OnlyFans. Sign up tonight. Stay connected to Larry Reed Live. Take a moment and like the Facebook page, subscribe to the YouTube page, and hit the bell. Text Larry Reed Live to 33222. That's the words Larry Reed Live, no spaces to 33222. And get notified when we go live. Become a member of Patreon. Log on to patreon.com forward slash Larry Reed Live. Sign up, then download the Patreon app and turn on your notifications. Get connected today. We're about to have a conversation.